It's March 14th, and this video is an update on Gaza. I'm by no means an expert, but it feels like we're getting a lot less updates from Gaza, and I want to contribute as much as I can. Um, Plestia has addressed that situation, saying just because you see less content coming from the Gaza Strip, it doesn't mean it's getting any better. It's only getting worse. Palestinians are still getting displaced, bombed, ethnically cleansed, and starved to death. I know that they're constantly dealing with uh, electricity shortages and lack of internet access, not to mention journalists are constantly targeted by Israel in order to silence them. First things first, I will tag a user in this video who has an instructional video on how to buy and send eSIMs to people in Palestine. Esims help them to be able to have internet access to get news and footage out. That's how we found out about the first flower bag massacre. A journalist got an esim right before it happened. So speaking of the flower massacre, um, just today the Israeli army had coordinates of a place where aid was supposed to arrive and where people were gathered to receive it and deliberately targeted them. Um, it's been 20 days in a row according to this source that Israel has targeted hungry civilians waiting for aid. They used helicopters and tanks to fire at the civilians. Just today, there were reportedly 60 martyrs and 160 injuries at the Al Kuwait roundabout where people were waiting for aid. Targeting civilians while attempting to obtain humanitarian supplies has been repeated for the fifth consecutive day as the total number of victims of the flower massacres has risen to more than 500 martyrs. Al-Quds is calling on the international community to ensure that aid can be delivered safely to the Palestinians facing famine. Also today, the EU parliament voted on a resolution decrying the catastrophic situation in Gaza. I don't know how much power this holds because we've seen Israel acting with impunity for five months now, but 372 MEPs voted in favor. Um, to call Israel to immediately allow and facilitate full aid delivery into and throughout Gaza via all existing crossings and underline the urgent need for rapid, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access. They reiterated a call for immediate ceasefire and recognized the indispensable role of the UNRWA in the region. Reminder of that, Western governments like the United States have withheld their funding from the UNRWA because of unfounded accusations by Israel that some members of the UNRWA are Hamas. Uh, I saw reports last week that some members of the UNRWA were tortured into confessing that they were members of Hamas. Additionally, Hamas has issued a statement holding Biden's administration responsible for Israel's ongoing massacres and caused the UN and Arab countries to take all necessary measures to deliver aid through land crossings and not submit to the will of the occupation state and its fascist policies. The failure of the international community and the UN to take action against the Israeli occupation army was a green light for further heinous crimes, which fall within the framework of genocide and ethnic cleansing against our Palestinian people with full support from the Biden administration, which shields the criminal entity from any international accountability. Not only has Israel targeted Palestinians waiting for aid trucks, they have also targeted Palestinians swimming out to receive um, airdropped aid. And airdropped aid has resulted in at least five killings and also damaged solar panels on a hospital, which is vital considering the lack of electricity and the lack of medical care facilities left because Israel has been bombarding them. Israeli settlers continue to block humanitarian aid trucks from entering Gaza, but the United States can bring trucks and construction supplies to build an alleged humanitarian aid pier. They can do this, but they can't allow aid in. It doesn't make sense. It also seems very clear that this is not actually a humanitarian aid pier. It is a United States military base that is directly tied to oil reserves located in Gaza. 20 miles off the coast of the Gaza Strip is an untapped oil field known as the Gaza Marine, which holds approximately a trillion cubic feet of oil. Biden's energy security advisor called this an economic revitalization for post-war Gaza Strip, but we know that Biden isn't interested in returning the Palestinian land to Palestinians, so this will be an economic opportunity for the United States and Israel. The United States has a deep history of going into foreign countries to appropriate their resources. 
and establish private foreign firms in those countries. The pier being built has sent approximately 1,000 U.S. military troops into Gaza. Some good news on this front is that BP and the UAE have suspended a $2 billion gas deal in Israel due to the Gaza genocide. Suspension can be temporary, of course, but this is still good. It seems like they're giving into international pressure. Speaking of public pressure, McDonald's Corporation loses $7 billion of its value within hours after its chief financial officer announced the continued impact of boycotts in the Middle East on sales during a current year. McDonald's stock plunges by over 3%, heading towards its largest daily loss in five weeks. The corporation announced that international sales will continue to decline in the current quarter. Additionally, multiple protests occurred in New York today at the New York Times. The company had some sort of all-hands-on meeting, and protesters were present in the lobby. Additionally, activists blocked a shipment of the Morning New York Times from leaving the printing plant in Queens in protest against the biased coverage of the newspaper. It's hard to see here, but there are videos of protesters stopping trucks from going out with the copy of the newspaper. Mainstream media has been strongly complicit in Israeli propaganda since October 7th and before, but the New York Times is facing particular backlash because of a now disproven story that was widely disseminated and started at their newspaper, alleging that Hamas had raped Israeli hostages. This story has been used far and wide to justify the ongoing atrocities being perpetuated against Palestinians. And finally, a reminder that we would not know what's going on in Palestine and other parts of the world if not for TikTok. The Israeli propaganda machine has been failing because of TikTok, and the United States government just this week proved that they are terrified of this. They are terrified of independent media. The House of Representatives voted 352 to 65 to ban TikTok and censor other platforms as they see fit if TikTok is not sold by its parent company. This would include heavy fines and jail time for anyone using a VPN in order to use TikTok if it were banned. Make no mistake, this is a censorship bill. And APAC was on the ground in D.C. days before the vote happened, with the bill's leader, Representative Mike Gallagher, in APAC's pocket. Actively receiving funds from Israel and writing a bill that accuses TikTok of being foreign influence on United States government. Receiving funds from Israel and writing a bill to ban the app that has been actively dismantling Israel's propaganda machine for the last five months. If you have the time to call or email, I have a link in my bio so you can contact your United States senators and tell them how you feel about the quote-unquote TikTok ban. You select your state, and then you can call or email your senators. It took me about five minutes to fill out the form and write an email, which I just copy and pasted to my other senator's email as well. The Senate still has to vote on this bill, and from what I understand, they're going to take more time with it than the rush job that the House did. TikTok CEO has indicated that they will not sell the company if this bill is passed, so TikTok will not be available in the United States. But this bill goes beyond TikTok. It allows the United States government to censor basically anybody. We're essentially in the middle of another Red Scare, with our representatives calling TikTok a communist Chinese spying app, despite having vested interests in apps that have actively breached the data of millions of Americans. Please, if you have a moment, contact your senator. Let them know how you feel about the TikTok ban, the censorship bill. Let them know you want actual humanitarian aid distributed to Palestinians safely. Let them know that you want an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Remind them that we employ them. Our power to vote them in and out of office means that they work for us. The fact that our tax-paying money pays their paychecks means that they work for us. Please continue to boycott, spread information, protest as you can, and free Palestine.